Hello and welcome to another Nosgoth News Network with me, Basil Lim. Um, must admit, wasn't expecting to be doing one of these again so soon, um, but uh, as the news comes up in the industry, we have to react, so uh, here we are. Um, okay, this uh, this week um, there have been some uh, big movements uh, along with uh, the parent company of the uh, Legacy of Kane IP, uh, that's the Embracer Group. Um, as we mentioned before, um, if you've not heard of them, they're a, a big player in the industry these days. They've spent the last couple of years um, gobbling up uh, a lot of uh, publishers and developers and uh, IPs and franchises. Um, they own some of the biggest names in the industry. So we're talking um, THQ Nordic, Coffee Stain, um, Saber Interactive, uh, Gearbox Entertainment, Easy Brain, Asmodee, Dark Horse, um, and of course our favourite Crystal Dynamics, Ados Branch. Um, it was reported not so long ago that they had over a hundred game development studios. Um, they employed nearly 17,000 people, had 200 games in development, uh, and something like over 30 of those being big budget AAA titles. Um, so they are a massive player in the industry these days. Um, it's fair to say that um, they've been um, they've spent the last few years um, buying up a lot of the real estate, um, but potentially the the gaming side of things haven't been the the best for them um, so far. Um, some of the stuff that has come out under their umbrella. Let's say nothing has exactly set the world on fire just yet. Um, they are responsible for, in fact, two of the um, biggest, you might call, gaming failures for the last uh, last few months in Saints Row, and the um, fairly disastrous release of uh, of Gollum recently. Um, both of which have uh, kind of earned responses that. Um, they might have been a bit too hands off with just throwing money at developers and letting them do their own thing. To be honest, it's fairly refreshing to see a company that's um, so open about things. They do have uh, publicly viewable investor calls, and uh, and a lot of the time you can see the very human reactions to the news, and you get a sense of of who the good guys are that care about the games. You get a sense of uh, who the money people are, um, and you can see generally from what they do, um, that they do care about the gaming industry quite a lot. As mentioned in the last video, they do have a project seeking to archive a lot of the older games, um, which has got to be positive for, for something like uh, Legacy of Kane and, and a lot of the older IPs that they own. Um, so there is a sense that there are some good people in there, um, but they are a massive, massive holding group that own a lot of uh, a lot of franchises and they need to be making money uh, and after years and years of spending 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 to to buy out half the industry at a time when the industry was contracting um it seems the financials have finally come back to bite them um so last month it was reported that they had a major deal um that was in the works that was worth over two billion dollars um, it was referred to as a massive game changer in the industry um, with months and months of uh, unwritten agreements to back it up and at the last minute that fell apart um, there is no word yet revealed as to what that deal was who it was with um, but it does sound like it, it was something that was was very very big something that, that would have um, put them into the stratosphere uh, and it fell apart. Um, this um, then caused um, them to embrace it to downgrade their forecasts and had a big drop in share prices. Um, the CEO Lars Wingerfors, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, he, you can see in the investor calls he was visibly uh, crestfallen by that. Um, looked like he'd been punched in the gut if I'm honest. Um, but um, uh, following on from that, it looks like it's the knock-on effect has travelled through the company um, and they've now decided on their course of action and what they're going to do and essentially they're holding off, they're stopping spending and they're re-evaluating everything they're holding. 
Um, inevitably, it looks like, um, or they have said, it's going to lead to restructuring, to, to layoffs, uh, studio closures. Um, it's not clear exactly who will be closing, who will be losing jobs, um, but it's clear that the uh, the market value has taken another massive hit. Um, what this means for Legacy of Cain isn't exactly clear. Um, we're not entirely sure of how it works with Embracer as yet. Um, they are still a massive company with a lot of resources uh, and we're not quite sure what they're doing with Legacy of Cain. Um, but fan reaction, to say the least, has been fairly negative. Um, although, to be fair, after all these years, we are kind of conditioned to jump to we're going to get another cancelled project. Um, so uh, it may not be that bad, um, but um, as Legacy of Kane fans, we, we do kind of expect cancellations. It's happened so much before. Um, sometimes the numbers on those get a little um, exaggerated, um, but um, we, we have had several games cancelled before, so we're kind of expecting that. Um, it's not necessarily bad news, though. Um, it it does kind of mean that Embracer will have to stop focusing on, on acquisitions and partnerships and will need to focus on content. Um, as they've already said in their meetings, they need, they've spent so long spending money, they now need to focus on how to make money. Uh, and the way to do that is games it's contents it's um, as they've said in their in in the uh, releases that have come up they need to focus on their internal IPs and yes legacy of Cain is now technically an internal IP it's one they completely own so that does potentially mean that um, rather than pursuing partnerships and rather than going out and buying new studios, you may well find that um, Embracer starts throwing all of its weight behind making good quality games. That's That would be the optimistic way to see the situation, um, to balance out the negative. It's that the way they have put out their, um, their statements is that they need to make good games now to justify the amount of money they've spent. Um, and some of the releases have already kind of stated this. Um, Lord of the Rings, for example, they know is a big IP, they know is an important franchise, and they have said they're going to be throwing their full weight behind it. Um, language used, if I'm honest, kind of implied they saw it as a bit of a, a cash cow, and after Gollum, yeah, there are going to be a few people with some cold feet on that one. Um, but we'll see how the rest of that that sort of uh, series pans out. Um, for its part, Crystal Dynamics has put out a sign of a, a business as usual message, um, specifically name dropping that it won't affect things like uh, Perfect Dark and their upcoming Tomb Raider reboot. Actually, that's a re reboot. Wait, re re reboot. Wee, 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 wee. Another Tomb Raider. Uh, anyway, uh, it won't affect Perfect Dark and Tomb Raider, um, which they already have announced plans for. Um, what that means for the rest of the things they own that they don't really have announced plans for isn't clear. And if they had unannounced plans, they wouldn't be able to announce what was happening to them anyway. So, uh, yeah, well, we don't know. <laughs> if nothing else, it, it obviously means that uh, the company as a whole has to stop splurging, start making games, start making money. And when you look at what's been put on the table, a game series with a 100,000 respondents survey is perhaps something they'd want to pursue. Who knows? In other news, there was a couple of uh, fan projects I, got, I forgot to mention last time, or a couple of... Uh, uh, projects I forgot to mention last time. Uh, one is the uh, the fan remake of Blood Omen 1, Blood Omen Resurgence. Um, that aims to completely recreate Blood Omen in 3D 
Um, I, I forgot to mention it last time, sorry about that. Um, I've put a link to, uh, there's a playable demo out, I'll put a link to that in the description. The other thing I forgot to mention was Dead House Sonata. Um, that's a little higher on the uh, on the official scale. It's uh, from uh, Dennis Dyack, who, uh, as many, many of you will know, was the uh, creator of Legacy of Kane and the uh, lead developer on Blood Omen 1. Um, Dead House Sonata is kind of marketed as a spiritual successor to Legacy of Cain, um, although that's kind of more a spiritual successor to Blood Omen than it is the rest of the series. Um, the game itself um, has a lot, a lot going on to try and summarise, but it's kind of an online multiplayer narrative driven action RPG, uh, which is a lot of hats to be wearing. Um, so we'll have to see how it how it comes together in the execution. Um, it's by Apocalypse Studios, as I mentioned, run by Dennis Dyack, um, and, and you can follow the progress. I'll, I'll pop the uh, pop the link in the description. Finally, a big thank you to uh, Sketch McDraw who uh, sent us this lovely Raziel mask. I don't know if you can see it in the background there. Um, that it was sent in to us by Sketch McDraw. Um, as many of you may know, we we do have a, a fairly large collection of. Uh, of Legacy of Kane stuff, but not all of it can fit behind me. Um, but uh, there are we do, we have plenty of things. Uh, we do appreciate everything that, that uh, gets sent in. Uh, it goes with our um, Kane bust up here, uh, contributed to us by Lucian Vampire. So uh, thank you guys. Thank you for for everything you've sent in. Uh, thanks for all the support. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Basil Lim on behalf of Rainer Audrin uh, signing out. Victus.